Hey, aloha, Mark J, World's Laziest Networker, coming to you from our backyard here in beautiful Kauai, Hawaii, and uh, have a special guest today, uh, Sarah Dooley. Welcome to our home, Sarah. Thank you. How are you? Great. You good? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Thanks for coming down. And um, basically, uh, the reason I wanted to have Sarah on, I know that you've probably seen interviews, and we've done a lot of them with really rich and famous people. And <laughs> And Sarah's on her way to be in that. And I got the idea. Um, you know, when we've had wonderful interviews with R Richard uh, Blissbrook and Tom Big Al Schreider, and recently I did something with Tom Chenault, and all that's great. But I know when I was first starting that I would, you know, I would see these high pin levels and everything. But I wanted to know about the people in between, you know, the early struggles and all that, because they're so past it. <laughs> I, it's like, oh, yeah, it's no big deal, you know, but they've been doing it for 10 or 20 years, and you just got started how oh, many years ago? Three years ago. About three years ago, yeah. And at that time, you were living in? Kauai. You were living in Kauai, and before that, you were? Houston, Texas. Houston, Texas. My brother's from Houston. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we used to, yeah he lives in Houston. Papacitos, right? Yep. The big platter. Yep. The big <laughs> the drink, the orange, the grande, a big one, right? <laughs> So, anyway, I um, actually met Sarah at a live event that we had here in Kauai recently. And the reason I asked her to uh, come down and do an interview, because she now lives on Kauai, is because of who she was when I met her, which to me was quite remarkable. And it's what we really try to get across in the courses that we teach, but meet very few people that have the courage or the intelligence, I think it's intelligence, not courage, but maybe you can straighten us out on that. What was so impressive about you is that um, you made a lifestyle choice before you started making money in network marketing. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, we decided to move to Kauai from Houston because we wanted to raise our daughter here. And it was a big transition. My family didn't think we had the guts to do it. <laughs> but of course, we we made a plan and and we did it and zero regrets. Yeah. So you've had a dream mm -hmm. beforehand. Now I think what's really important for people that are aspiring to succeed in network marketing, and you correct me if I'm wrong or you don't agree, um, is that basically you got to have a vision. And I found what was so impressive about you was that you had a wonderful education. And you were actually working in your profession when you decided this isn't working, <laughs> right? Yes. So tell us about your background, <laughs> what okay. was, you know, your degree, and what you were actually doing. Okay. I was working in Houston, Texas. I have three degrees, an undergraduate in social work and modern dance and a master's of education because I was really determined to find a job that was suitable to me and how hard I like to work. And I worked in teaching for about four years, and I had a change of heart one summer. Uh, even though I had signed my contract, I just, I just couldn't go back. Um, I knew there was something else for me, so I left it. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. that was more about family. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. and, and I think a lot of people uh, get involved in network marketing, and um, they say, I got involved in network marketing because I want things to be better for my family. You know, mm -hmm. I want more money from my family. I want more time. And the first thing that happens is they're spending less time <laughs> and with their family and there's less money because right. they're investing in the business. Mm -hmm. And you made that decision to improve the quality of life for your family before you had success in network marketing. Yes. Uh, tell me about that. You know, what was that? What really went on for you internally? Because I think or I actually believe, and, and again, if you don't agree, that's what people want to know. That's why you're here. Um, that you've got to have a vision, and then you build into that vision little new things that you open to. But if there's no mm -hmm. vision, there's really no chance of being successful. I think a lot of people get involved in network marketing because they want to get rid of the bills, they want to get rid of the bad car, they want to get rid of the job. And mm -hmm. that that's, that's not going to get it done because mm -hmm. that's all fear-based. So you made a faith-based decision. Tell me about that. How did you find the confidence or the conviction? I mean, what actually happened? Mm. You said, we're done with Houston. We're moving to Kauai. <laughs> I just 
knew that I knew that I knew that I knew that the biggest contribution I could make to my life, to anyone's life, was to be a stay-at-home mom for my daughter, and that was just my personal choice. My husband was on the same page, so that's what drove us to Kauai, and watching her grow up here, it was very clear that she was the reason we were here. And the first two years, it was definitely an investment in her life and our life and those choices that we made, and it wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our cost of living tripled, and now we had one income instead of two, and there were three of us. We shared a car. We, you know, we scraped by, and it's because, I think, that we made those choices and we're willing to make those investments or sacrifices that the opportunity of network marketing came to us, right. and it, it, kind of, it kind of sealed that gap for us. Right. I saw it like I could have my cake and eat it too. I could be the stay-at-home mom that I wanted to be, and now I have a way to support myself to do that. And not only you stay-at-home mom, you're a homeschooler. Yes. And so, uh, so much for the excuses. I have kids. You know, most people that have kids, <laughs> they have them in school, and they do have a four or five-hour window. Like my wife, the fabulous Davine. You know, she'd drop her kids off at school, work her business for a few hours, rest and then go pick the kids up and play with the kids. Mm -hmm. Big mom sort of personality, you know, one of those big mom types, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the kind of woman that's depressed <laughs> when the other kids in the neighborhood go home. Yeah. Right? Oh, no, no, go. But um, that lifestyle choice in homeschooling, and, and, and that takes several hours a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you still find time to build the business. Absolutely. Okay. So, again, one of the reasons that I wanted to have uh, Sarah on is that she made a lifestyle choice about what's right for her life, not what you wanted to get away from, but an ideal that you saw. Mm -hmm. And then to supplement that, network marketing came along, and the first year or so wasn't really explosive for you. Right. See, anybody can be successful <laughs> once you start doing the right things, right? So tell me about those first couple of years until you until the, the, the trigger got pulled for you. Okay. It's fascinating looking back because right away I turned to my husband. I said, can you do this? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, all right. And about six, seven, eight months in, it wasn't moving at the speed I thought it should be moving at. <laughs> <laughs> so I got involved. But about three months in, I started to see that this is what I was supposed to be doing. And fell in love with network marketing. And we, we had a, a team that did pretty well. Um, in the beginning, but our business has really plateaued. I don't think it was until the last few months that I really saw where I needed to grow personally in order to have the results for other people and for ourselves that, that we were hoping for. Right. Now, one of the things that I like to say is that a person's paycheck is going to be a directly in proportion with their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. um, you're a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's one of the things you probably know a lot more about. You know, I'm just a guy winging it. You know, I'm just a bozo <laughs> on the bus firing shots and see if somebody believes it. Maybe it's true, right? But um, um, so personal development. So your group is puttering along. You're cashing small checks. Mm -hmm. And I think you should tell them where your group is at today. Now, just a few months later, it's at. Yeah, we have just over a thousand people. Just over a thousand people, mm -hmm. and you're with Life Vantage. Yes, it's a great company. You know, the the product shows up, and the paycheck shows up. Mm -hmm. Other than that, the company's off the hook. Uh, but one of the things I like about that particular deal is it's affordable, and you guys also have a nice customer base too mm -hmm. to drive more volume. So you have a thousand, over a thousand people in your group, and and you're saying personal development was really the first step in bringing your business from just sort of making a few hundred dollars a month to this group that's a thousand and growing. I know you mm -hmm. sponsored just a couple of people last week, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and you've learned how to basically sponsor on demand, right? Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Bring us back to the personal development and what happened for you. Okay. Well, I've, I've always heard this idea that personal development was key. I could never wrap my mind around what I needed to do exactly. <laughs> What does that mean for me? And I started this Think and Grow Rich course and um, Go 90 Grow. And all the pieces started to come together. Right. 
And then after the live event, it was like, like a volt, like a, like a light bulb turned on where I just had this feeling where I could sit with somebody and look them in the eye and tell them I knew exactly what they needed to be able to do. Yeah. But I, I went through that journey myself first with that course right. that really helped give me that kind of confidence. Right. And so, basically, you went through personal development and then found the key. I remember you contacting me one day and we had a little short conversation. We're like, oh, 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 I know what you mean about sponsoring on demand now. <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden, you just know because you're present in the conversation, mm -hmm. I think is what you said. Could you expand on that a little bit? What do you mean? Uh, you know, look me in the eye and tell me what you mean by present in the conversation with a prospect. Because that's really what people want to know. Yeah. Right? They don't really understand that getting them in is easy. Once mm -hmm. you know it's easy. Mm -hmm. Helping them produce. So we'll get to helping them produce in a minute. But getting people in and that sitting there and being present. Can you tell me how what that was like for you? Okay. Well, I have a, I have this idea of what they want in their life, what they want more of or less of. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that the person sitting in front of me wants someone to help them make that decision. Mm. And the best thing that I can do is to be in service to what they want. And now I see that I can help them get what they want and, and just communicate that to them. And here's the big $100,000 a year question. How do you find out what they want more of in less of? <laughs> you ask them. You ask them. <laughs> you ask right. them. And then you... <laughs> close your mouth. Close your pie hole, yeah. And so that's worked out. And so now you're enrolling people virtually on demand. Your group's at 1,000 people. Um, you can see the light moving towards you rather than having to move towards the light of that, you know, materializing that ideal. And so now the challenge changes is getting people to produce mm -hmm. and helping them grow personally and of course um, you know years ago I don't know if you know this or not but years ago um, they used to have on network marketing applications your occupation hmm. and you know some group that had nothing better to do right said hey let's take that off there you shouldn't have to ask that but they used to track it and the number one success rate were teachers hmm. number two were the state home parent, hmm. and number three, we're engineers and accountants because when you tell them to do things one, two, three, four, five, so you're a stay at home <laughs> mom and you're a teacher, right? Yes. So, what insights can you share with people? Because I know your team's producing, you didn't put mm -hmm. a thousand people in. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what insights can you share? So, you get someone in the business, and everybody knows that it's not about sponsoring more, it's about getting more people sponsoring and building their confidence. What do you do with people? to get them moving in the right direction? Well, I constantly help remind them why they're there and show them the simple, simple, simple steps <laughs> to get them what they want. And I relate what they're doing, the behaviors that we do to build the business, I relate it to what they want. Right. So you don't focus on results. Right. <laughs> which, is, <laughs> which is right out of a great book called The Influencer. It's got nothing to do with network marketing. Buy it, you get rich. Uh, don't buy it, you'll stay poor. And I didn't write it, okay? I'll give you a shameless plug for my book later. But anyway, <laughs> so basically you focus on their behaviors. Mm -hmm. And I know that you've talked a lot about talking in a language that they understand. Tell me what that means because that's really the key. You know, everybody says, oh, relationships are key, but they don't tell you how to improve exactly. them, and you've learned how to improve them, right? Yes, I, I've i learned through this course that not everybody speaks or understands the way that I understand things. So we do the color code, and we find out what what my, they're motivated by, right. and I use that to communicate to them, and it's so much more effective. Really? Yes, I think that I used to push people away because I didn't understand why they didn't want to do all this with their calendar just like I do yeah. and why aren't they so organized and don't they think like this but yeah. now I see that this is a person in front of me who speaks a completely different language is motivated by different things mm -hmm. and I have that sense of understanding which I'm continuing to develop sure but that's that's how I've learned to be more effective at communicating with people right 
So we'll put that link down there for them so they can get their okay. color right. So you think that that's a great thing. Absolutely. And that's free, right? You yes. get it done for your teammates free. So you're saying that you adjust to their way of communicating instead of doing what Reds normally do. <laughs> Why don't you get this? Don't you understand? Why aren't you organized? We're going to build this thing. Yes. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So we're both Reds, right? So we'd kill each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, we built, <laughs> well, we built an empire. So basically, you're enrolling people now when you're sitting down with them. You're finding out what they want more of and less of. And you said something really important as far as I'm concerned. It's really the key to success, in, in my opinion, like your opinion on it. Success is service. Yeah, how yes. do you feel about that? Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. how do you, you go about that? You get their color so you can talk in a language that they understand. So your communication skills uh, are improving with your teammates. Mm -hmm. And how about at home? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Always a work in progress, but improving. Yeah, my wife's a blue, so it's, you know, <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's a battle of control freaks. But anyway... Um, so you get them in and you get them rolling and you're doing a lot of this. I know that you've moved away from what's now being taught online and plugging them into stuff mm -hmm. and just doing the work with them. How does yeah. that compare to the, the, the modus operandi or the way that you teach? Is it parallel to it? I mean, is showing people what to do, I, I just like to say show and tell is the way to go. How do you feel about that? Well, as you say, the proof is in the printout. <laughs> the proof for me was when we had these three new team members come on. I kid you not, I've never had this experience before, but three of them looked at me and they said, I trust you. I trust that you're going to help me in this process. And all I've done is told them that we're going to work hands-on, and I just really communicated that, that part to them specifically. Yeah, and people appreciate that. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I like to say that. Uh, and maybe this is your experience, but when people join, they're never more excited, you know, in that first 48 hours. They got visions of sugar plums dancing in their head, and they're going to make 20, 30,000 a month, and they're going to save the world and save the whales. And simultaneously, <laughs> the, other, the other mouth in their head is saying, you're a loser, you're never going to make it. So fear and, fa fear and faith or success and failure are just having this battle up there mm -hmm. and to be able to educe or draw trust out of them is huge and you'd say that that's a direct result of what exactly happens do you think that triggers that I mean I know you and I know you're trustworthy mm -hmm. but a lot of us have been burned before so yeah. we're skeptical going in how do you how do you feel is a good way if you could share it with people to bridge that to build a bridge to trust you know what do you actually do besides the color or you just keep it simple to bridge the trust, I, uh, I, I, commun I do my best to communicate clearly to their color, like you said. Um, also, we work hands-on. We make the calls together. Right. And Say that again. We make the calls together. I want to make sure the mic is on. Say it again. <laughs> we make calls together. Okay. <laughs> people are telling you, here, here's a script, line people up. It's, it, it's a graveyard. Yeah. It's a graveyard, right? Okay, so... Anyway, you've got it. Where are we at for space here? Okay, so a um, couple of off-the-cuff questions put you on the spot here. Okay. We call it the, <laughs> the, the hot seat, right? Three do's. Three things that you would say, you know, based on your struggle for two and a half years, and all of a sudden your business has taken off, people are enrolling people, they're trusting you, teammates are giving you everything they have where... Before, like myself, you were, you were like pulling teeth to get them to do anything. Three do's. Go 90 grow. Can I say that? <laughs> well, we're not here to plug me, but, you know, that's fine. That made the difference for me, learning the skills. Um, so skills. Skills. You gotta learn the skills, right? Personal development. Mm hmm And organized planning. <laughs> that's Looking the truth. Like red. So red. That's the truth. And three don'ts. <laughs> Um, don't drop, drop your, your mic, mic. <laughs> <laughs> don't work alone, work with some people you can bounce ideas off of, right. um, don't be inconsistent, 
And don't forget the reason why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Because I know now, like myself, you know, I used to be depressed before 9 o'clock in the morning and after 9 o'clock at <laughs> night. I'd be waiting for the second hand to move up so I could start calling <laughs> people, bouncing out of bed, rather than feeling guilty. I was excited about moving in, and it's because I didn't forget why I was doing this. And I know you have that beautiful daughter in front of you every day. Mm -hmm. Let's give her a shameless plug. We can say hello. Hi, Alana. I love you. Hi, Alana. I love you, too. <laughs> Thanks for liking my book, Standing Tall. So you get in a shameless plug. But anyway, um, actually, Joey the Giraffe stands tall, right? That's yes. the one. So, um, okay, we end uh, all our interviews the same way. Um, and... Um, we're going to ask you a series of questions, just whatever comes to your mind. <laughs> your favorite word? Red. <laughs> <laughs> She's about the money, the bottom line. Okay. And your least favorite word? Oh, hate, mm. war, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Einstein said war is a three letter word for murder. Mm. I'm with you there. What turns you on? Learning something new in a challenging way. Okay. What turns yeah. you off? Bitter, angry people. Negative energy. Yeah. I'm yeah. very positive. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite sound? I like that bamboo and the sound of the ocean. Yeah. Nice. And your least favorite sound? Screaming. Screaming. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why we're not a match. I do a little primal screaming. <laughs> Other than network marketing, which obviously you're succeeding and you're on your way into that legend status, what profession would you like to try? I've always wanted to be a librarian. Wow. <laughs> Got to put your hair on a bun. Give yeah. me one of these. Shh. Oh, perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> okay. And what profession would you least like to try ever? Politics. Politics. Yeah. I hear you. Talk about <laughs> screaming. Okay. Favorite cuss word? The F word. <laughs> <laughs> and last question for you. If heaven exists, when you get to the pearly gates, what would you like to hear God say? I love you. Uh, and I love you too. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thank you. Hey. Right. Peace be the journey. Let's say bye to your daughter one more time. Aloha. Aloha. Peace out. <laughs>